Hello, and welcome back to Showtime number six, part three. In part one, we ranted about why Showtime had to be cancelled last week. Huh. In part two, we looked at the AMX 12 ton and how we learned last week in... Last week, two, yeah, it did, two weeks ago <laughs> on a Hard Scout Live, how to use scouts. And we showed a good use of a scout tank in Assault on one of the known harder maps for Assault on Malinovka when you're on the attacking team. So be aware of that when you're defending as well. In part three, however, we have a viewer sent in um, for recording. And again, I've forgotten the guy's name. Thank you. Sorry. Here it is. And it's Boulderick. So Boulderick sent in two games for me to analyze for him. One of them is a loss and one of them's a win. And it's up for you guys to figure out which one's which. So we're going into game number one now. And not that. Remove, remove, remove. Yeah, that game. Oh, yeah, right. So he's in his Panzer three. So if you guys thought we only did high level uh, casting, you are wrong. We have also got the audio muted. Yay. Right. We also do low tier battle suit because it's just important. You're going through these tiers first. And so you kind of need to learn how to deal with these battles as well. They're not the same. Seriously, playing in high tiers, you have to play differently to low tiers. Some of the basic rules still apply, but you do have to play them slightly differently. So let's have a look. First things first, have a look at your lineup. So we see that the top tank on our team is an A20. Oh, God. Uh, Covenator on theirs. We've got a Covenator too. Two headers, two headers. Sounds good. M3 Lee, awesome. It looks pretty even. Okay. So all the way down the line, the T40s need to be, um, you need to be concerned about. Uh, but all in all, looks okay. Sweet. So the Panzer III has a really tough front. Okay, so space, I think it's spaced armor at the um, top there uh, on the turret. And the front armor is 70, which is pretty damn ridiculous for this tier. Um, in a medium tank, you know? It's pretty good. So he's got binoculars on as well, which means he can scout if he needs to, as you can see down there. It is 25%. There you go. 25%. So he's now spotted on the minimap that there's a group of enemies coming here because his ally he just went down there and died. So the first things first is let's go down there. Let's see his point of view. He's on the ridge there trying to aim down but moves across. And now is engaging a T-40 and a Hetzer. Already you need to be very concerned. The T-40 and Hetzers are very, very, very good tier 4 tanks. In tier 4 only tanks, they're like the best ones to have when you team. The Hetzer, if he's got his explosive cannon, his 105mm, can one-shot almost any tank of its tier. Really. No, re really. If you've ever played with me with a Hetzer, it can almost one-shot any one of its tier. Now, a lot of people wonder why on my account I've got so many Hetzers games played. That was before they made the Hetzer a small attack band. I was constantly going against tier 8s. And I did kill type 59s in them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, anyway, let's go forward. Um, so this maneuver I really think is um, a poor choice. He just drives out right in front of them and takes the shot. Now, he is aiming for them. Let's not watch his aiming. Let's watch his angling. Okay, that first shot went straight through his upper plate, which I just said was the toughest part of the armor. However, as you can see there, the, oh, I can't do that. The bouncing is happening on the front. The front of his armor is angled at such an angle that it's actually bouncing. The same rules as the KV, uh, the KV series, but the front of the armor is very bouncy if you hit it on the slope that goes up. Just want to keep bouncing away. Bing, bing. And the enemy are all shooting really high on the front armor. And he goes down to 3 HP. And is still just firing away. Sack it, firing away. Which I don't agree with. Eventually, his allies die. All apart from one Hetzer. So, let's pause it now and have a look at the map. First of all, look at the teams. So, we've only lost one more than them. Okay? So, Baldurick's team has lost one more than the other team. Okay? Panzer three, they've lost theirs. We're obviously ours, but we're almost dead. Um, they've lost a T40, fantastic. Oh, we've lost a T40, damn. They lost two T28s, we've lost one. We've also lost an M3 Lee and a Panzer 38 NA, and they've got a loss in SU85B. It's still roughly even, but we are definitely losing. Look at the minimap. 
We have a Hetza defending. That's bad because Hetzers are so powerful in this tier. There's no reason for him to be camping. He should be on the front line. Our SU-40 is taken out of Matilda. That's good, assuming the, S the SAU-40 wins. The Storm Hazard 2 is in a good position to support up here. And Matilda is going against another Matilda with the Valentine back, um, backing him up. I'm guessing the M5 Stuart's not in the game because there's no reason he should be there. So that's not looking too bad. We know there's quite a few tanks here. It should, should be okay. So let's go. Let's move on. Now, the fact he's able to support his headset by being there is pretty good, but there's a lot better things he could be doing right now. He could be flanking. In fact, when he had full health, he should have flanked immediately. Instead of sitting there and dying with his teammates, he should have just gone round the back. But he didn't. And he's still just sitting here being reasonably useless. It's not complete useless. As we learned with the Lurvi video, that he's stopping the enemies coming past the ridge there. So that's good. Can we turn that off? Yes, we can. So he's um, stopping the enemies coming around here by making them scared. Because if they come out here, he's going to get shot in their side armor. And because they're TDs, if he tracks them, they're dead. So they're actually he's actually doing a bit here. But he could be doing a lot more if he actually just flanked. He just comes around here and goes around the back of them. <clears throat> come on, Baldrick. You can make the right choices. The Matilda did die over there to the S, uh, SA-40, but their T-40 has come through the middle now. Uh-oh. Awesome. The Hetzer is winning down here. That's good. He's still at max health. He's taken one of them out. The SAU-40. Brilliant. From Baldrick Cam as he comes around the corner here, decides that, hey, I'm going to go round and flank at last. Don't worry, you can take your time, no problem. Bolderick to the rescue! Speed up. Boom! 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 Now he was lucky that the autocannon was being used there because it didn't go through. And the Hetzer's got his ass to you, so goodbye Hetzer. And that means we saved the other Hetzer with almost max health. Brilliant! Cool! Let's do it! Let's go to the base. We've won, right? We've got five tanks versus four. So right now I'm going to pause it. You guys vote. Is this game a win or a lose? So what you know. You've seen the map. You've seen the enemies. Is it a win or a loss? Let's have a look. Hetza, Hetza, Matilda M5, Panzer III uh, T40, but you've got an SAU40 and a T40. Uh, some Panzer II. So basically you've got an identical force apart from you've got an M5 Stuart and a Panzer III instead of a Matilda. Okay. Will our hero Baldrick succeed or fail? Vote now! Seriously, vote now! Let's keep an eye on the map. We're rendezvousing here. The M5 is definitely AFK because he's still looking at the middle and not doing anything. Enemy artillery spotted and a Hetzer. Now the Hetzer's clearly AFK. So that was a really good choice from Boyderick there, aiming for the artillery. And now deal with the AFK in time. Now it's really important to get rid of the AFK at this point here because he is lighting them up. The vision for the AFK tank still applies, so you've got to get rid of it. Cool. Wait a few seconds for the vision to go, and then get into the cap circle. Win. Okay, now, is that the boys, wisest choice to go for the cap circle? Yeah, probably. They've got a Matilda and T-40 aren't the fastest vehicles. As long as you get in good position to the cap circle, like behind the Hetzer, or behind the artillery, or even behind the destructible train there, you should be fine. Not sitting in the open here. Right, let's just pause it here. This is a mistake I see a lot of people doing on this map. Whoops, going below the map. They think they're invincible, but let's just go into the middle, the last place we saw the uh, T-40. The T-40 was up here. Where is he? There. Right, he's right... Is he rendering? There he is. Okay. I'm blind. So he's over there. I'm now looking at him now. So you can see him. No, he is visible. If you're up here, you're not. 
but you are if you're up here. You're still visible. Maybe a slight chance. Maybe you think it's not worth it's not worth the hassle. But some tanks are taller than others. Some tanks are taller than others. And yeah, it's definitely the best place to go if you have to go somewhere. If you have no cover, if there's no destroyed tanks like that, then it's definitely the best place to go. Definitely don't move. You get a higher silhouette there. Right, Hesse was just hit. Where from? T40. T40 just sniped the Hesse. The shot went from behind as well, so there was shots going beyond him from that direction. Which means, if they could see the Hetzer, guess who else they can see? Don't drive forward. See that? Beforehand, he was definitely hidden, right? By large. He had just the top of his cupola vision visible. Speed up. Speed down. But now look at him. Oh my. Now we can see a good third of your tank. Boom. See you later. If you hang to the back of this circle, you have maximum protection. And Hetzer, what are you doing, mister? Hetzer goes forward thinking, well, my teammates just died sitting in the open there. Why don't I get killed? Right? Why don't I get killed? Now look at the teammates. Four for the T40. Hetzer. Hetzer, you've been hit a few times. Hetzer, you've been hit. You've been hit again. Hetzer's like, don't worry, I got this, bros. I got this. No problem. See, told you I got this. I've got this, guys. I'm gonna just drive forward and show myself. Boom! T40, got ya. Now we've got a really good artillery player left. And I say he's really good, because you have to be, whoa. Oh wow, I've managed to lock in for this guy. Oh no, it's because our, yeah, I know why. Our hero was looking around saying, what's he doing? So Baldrick's dead now, so is his two teammates for not paying attention. So now we've got the artillery who's got four kills at this point. So he's done really well for such a low tier battle. But we have a ninja T40 who's clearly known what he's doing because he'd managed to clean up the entire cap circle on his own. If he comes out of this spot here, we know where he was all along. So let's have a look. Let's speed up the map. And there we go. Out comes the T40. From up here. He came round... Artillery hits, but not quite good enough. The M5 Stuart's going to go down. And let's see the unfortunate demise of the last stand here. Mr. Matthias Weltall. Yeah. The only thing the artillery can do is fire and move. If he moved now to over there and looked this way, he would have a much better chance because the enemy knows where he is now. But he's going to sit still and try and aim on the corner. However, the front armor of the T-40 is unlikely to be penetrated from the Panzer. Uh, some Panzer too. Oh wait, he's going for the cap. Really? Oh, no. He was like, played it safe. That T-40 driver was very good. The T-40 driver was like, hey... I'll go to the cap circle because the cap circle means that they, the artillery has to come to me. And that means he'll be in the open. I'll be able to see him. And if he doesn't come to me, I win. Easy. Nice. So that was an unfortunate loss. But the HP loss from Baldrick um, uh, when he was trying to fire out with the the uh, TDs was probably his biggest mistake. When his, when his allies were engaging them from the front, if he just used his speed to get around the back, he would have cleaned them up with almost no damage to himself. Maybe it's hard to know with low tier battles because enemies don't act in predictable fashions. They, they change all the time. They do unpredictable things. As it's known with sword mastery, a swordsman master, right? A master of swords, fears most the complete and utter rookie because he will do something just completely random. He won't be where he needs to be. He won't have his guard where he should have his guard. Therefore, he might do something unexpected. And with a sword fight, one in a hundred fights, you might find someone who does something that you've never thought of or is just totally unexpected, and you're taken off your guard. And one single mistake in sword fighting, and you're dead. Hmm. Anyway, that was a good battle, and it was really, really close down to the wire. And he's sending a second battle for us to have a look at, so we're going to have a look at that now. 
Jeep. He is driving his, I've got details of it here, his Churchill 1. Okay, so we've got a nice Churchill 1 British battle to go to now. And look at the first thing to do is look at the list. While you're loading into the battle, always look at your lists. KV-1S platoons at the top of your list. You must feel really comfortable there. Jackson EZ-8, VK-3601. These are things of no. And two ELCs in a tier 6 battle. GG. Wow, what a good list. Now, on the other team, they have a KV-2, definitely to be feared. A KV-1S, who's platoon with him, so they're definitely someone to look out for. A VK-3601 platoon with a VK-3001, they're also to fear. The Type 80, uh, 58 is actually really solid. Two KV-1s in a Tier 6 battle are not so scary, but they're still formidable opponents. The M7s are not exactly the most uh, fearful opponents to have. And a grill. So their grill should be something you look out for, especially as a Churchill. So let's see what he does. Let's get this show on the road. And the first thing he does is ram his uh, priest. Now this is always annoying. Unless there is your friend, someone doing this to you is always really annoying. And I, I really understand the people who are like, should I shoot him? Should, should I shoot him? Should I shoot him right now? Just to say, half. The answer is no, you shouldn't. But I know the feeling. I know the feeling. I understand you. I feel it with you, brothers. I'm there with you. So look at your team movements, as always. You've got the um, few taking the hill. You've got a few taking the town. You've got a few guarding the southern pass. That's okay. One or two down here to guard artillery or um, a quick cap is not necessarily a bad thing. So the two ELCs are guarding this. These two guys are taking the head, and over here, um, you, you main force. That's actually quite a good tactic on this map. I don't, I don't disagree with that. So long, and I'll add this clause. If you're down here, you move up when you see where the enemies are. If you see all 15 enemies over here, move up. If you see 10 enemies over here, move a scout up or something. Do, don't sit down and do nothing. So we're going to see what happens over here. Let's fast forward a little bit. Battle in the middle. So far, this looks good. We're gonna we're gonna watch from the minimap. How enticing! So the hill lost KV1S. That's not so good. But the battle's going well. We got your main force here. You got a defensive forces over here. So you know there's gonna be quite a lot of enemies over here. So that's that's actually quite good information here. So you should win the town. Oh, first things first. Things are happening. An enemy scout ran forward over here. If you missed it, Panzer 3A, Ostiv A and has spotted the Churchill and obviously he's taken a bit of damage. No hit point damage though, luckily. Cool. Let's move on, Churchill. Drive on. The battle over there is being won, although you're losing a lot of troops. Um, it's actually a lot more than I expected to lose. Ooh. Churchill has spotted the enemy KV-1. As I said, not so scary. Easily taken out by the Jackson. KV-2, a lot more scary, but knowing the rules from our newbie knight the other night, he knows exactly where to shoot the KV-2, no problem. KV-1, KV-1S, sorry, no problem. We know exactly where to shoot the KV-1S. Absolutely no problem. Okay, so the town didn't go as well as expected, so it's all up to us on this flank, because look at the enemy defenders. Nice, take out the damaged enemies first. Fantastic target priority. We can see with the um, numbers going down here, right? I'm going to hide the mini-map so I can show you, that he's using premium shells right now. He Obviously, I've not got this display on here, but because he's only got one shot left, these are definitely um, premium shells. He's going to run out soon, though. There you go. Now he's back to his normal ammo, 59. So that really actually helped. He had a half a clip of um, a premium ammo to, to deal with the enemy's uh, biggest targets, and he dealt with the KV-2. Um, that way, although I don't think he needed them, but it certainly didn't help as a tier 5 against a tier 6. So it didn't hurt, sorry. So let's see what happens now. The flank on the other side, KV-1 over there with a VK-3601, a KV-1 and a cowardly KV-1S at the back here. Probably lower HP or something. Let's have a look. Yeah. Oh no, can't see him. He's not rendering. So let's hope our teammates do well. But at this point here, the ELC has the best gun. The Churchill is a bit worried about that. However, don't knock down the trees. If you're trying to be stealthy, don't knock down the trees. The enemy has a grill. 
but this is looking really dire. The um, enemy ch uh, grill has done really well, and the Churchill One has also cleared up this entire force over here, We're leaving just KV-1. So that was actually a really poor effort from his teammates on the other flank. He's got to make something work. EOC, fantastic, uh, reasonably snappy shot there. And the gunner has died. Use your med pack! Surely you've got a med pack. But the Type 58 goes down, and the Churchill's fantastic um, side skirting is absorbing the rest of the ships. So let's see where he goes from the other side. Get down into the ravine. Down. Don't just open your side open. Get down there. If you head down there, then the enemy over here, the KV-1, will not be able to shoot you. Get down there. Go on. Stay in the tree line, but get down there. Unfortunately, the EOC was taken out, but the VK-3001 is still with us, and the KV-1 is deciding to push forward on the other side. So, looking a bit even again. Although the enemy have a big TD, we're looking at a Jagdpanzer IV. Very dangerous right now, could one-shot almost any of them. However, it's AFK. So, luck would have it that the enemy's most fearsome foe right now is AFK. They've got a KV-1, they've got the Grill, and they've got a Churchill-1. All very formidable at this point, but and there you go, the Grill showing his mark here. But quickly take out this AFK guy. Why? As we said earlier, if they're AFK, they're really AFK. At this point of the battle, he's not coming back. If it was near the start and you managed to get upon them, take them out, because they might reconnect. But at this point, you should have ignored him. You just got one of your teammates killed. Well, you didn't get him killed. He got killed by staying still. However, that leaves you and your artillery left. A reasonable decision going back. The grill's very good at point blank shooting, so I wouldn't necessarily want to risk it. Not with only 81 HP, sorry, 95 HP with the Churchill. I go back, he tells his mates. We must defend. That's a good strategy right now, I would say. Um, defending when you're low HP and you're outnumbered is normally good. The enemy are often cocky and will come forward. As long as you've got a good defensive position and not a stupid place, everything's fine. Let's fast forward when he gets into position. The M7 Priest decides to attack because he's a nub. No doubt will die before he does anything, but he might be lucky. Oh, if he finds the grill now and is that lucky, I kind of want to watch the grill. I want to watch the M7 Priest. Warp speed! Dum 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 It's not rendering anyway. Okay. Go! Okay, so we have seen the Churchill and the Grill! He's moved up! What a stupid mistake by the enemy Grill! If he can capitalize on this and kill the Grill, all the best. But he's not. What's he stopping for? Oh, the M7 Priest! Very nice! The M7 Priest was in position. And he's deciding to just eye them. Let them know. I thought he would have rolled back from the bush and taken some shots uneyed. But instead, he decides to leave them be. Now, if I was the M7 Priest right now, I would be aiming to finish off that KV-1. It's 18 HP. You just saw it over there, and I would have taken that out. So let's see what happens. Let's see if that M7 Priest does this. This is very fluky positioning. I would have had the M7 Priest over here, by the way, shooting in. And this is great positioning from the Churchill. Don't fire now. You've let them get too close. You fire now, you are certainly spotted. This is absolutely fantastic play here from our hero, Baldrick. He has to wait until the last possible second. However, look at that red, red, red on the Churchill. Fantastic play from the M7 Priest. Resets the cap. He fires. The grill has now seen him and is aiming. But the reach, reload rate of the Churchill was fantastically fast. Boom, boom, boom. He is gone. KV-1 is already aiming. Oh, and he tracks him. He should have been the death of him. But there we go. Oh, the first shot misses. The KV-1 decides to move instead of shoot again. And the Churchill will eventually go through. Or is he using high explosives? I'm not sure. I think that was a um, high explosive. Very, very nice from the Churchill 1. And the M7 Priest should be able to finish his guard. But still nothing. What's going on? Nothing's happening how it should. There he goes. GG. And even if he didn't succeed there, the cap would have happened from the M7 Priest. What a nice result.
What a nice result there. It proves that even not the top tank, just some random person can be the hero. I would have, I was the um, M7 priest gone behind the lines, behind the Churchill and shot from there. That would have probably had a very similar result um, of damaging them. But as luck would have it, the grill had moved up to cap instead of supporting his allies and wasn't there to defend against the M7 priest. So whatever, cool. That was a really exciting uh, match. And if you guys are interested, he did send the screenshots and I will put them into the scene now and you guys will be able to take a look at how he was rewarded for his efforts. And he took a screenshot of the mastery he got for it, which is 3000 XP, uh, was with premium. And he got 1000 raw, which you will see in the next shot. Uh, mm -mm -mm, mm -mm -mm. Oh no, wrong one. Up you go. There. So on his team, he performed so well. That 1013, the nearest guy to him was the KV-1S with 611. And people say the KV-1S is a OP. They gotta nerf the Churchill, right? Nerf the in Churchill. Did you not see it in that battle? Did you not see the Churchill? Nerf it, right? Anyway, their KV-1 got, got an ally kill, but also got their top XP. So that proves how badly the team did, apart from the Grill, who was second. This is pretty damn good. So let's have a look at the next screenshot where it shows his profits. So 10,000 profit. His resupply is huge because of his premium ammo usage. However, he would have broken even, even without premium account. So that proves that he didn't really have that much uh, premium and that he did use them effectively remember premium shots are a part of the game now you can buy them credits but wasting them or firing them randomly will still mean you make a huge loss so i'm going to open up questions because we did miss newbie night last night so i want to answer a few questions for you guys um even about something you saw tonight or just in general and we'll do that for five minutes and end the show hmm yeah Viva la banana! Because why banana? Because, because they're not apples. That's why. That's why bananas, right? Because they're not apple. Oh, have you seen the mouse video? Who likes the new voiceover for the mouse video? Cool. I'm gonna crack my fingers. Ugh. But <laughs> nerf apples. <laughs> no, nerf bananas, man. Nerf bananas. They're OP. You should definitely check out. It's a Wargame and official video. They've changed the voice. It's no longer the robot voice. It's actually a friend of mine. Uh, he works for Riveting TV. His name is Wings Limited. You should definitely check out his channel, slash Wings LTD on Twitch. He's the voiceover now for the American um, language. So you expect to see him a lot more often. And if you love his voice, then by all means, go and check him out. We will. Congratulations, Wings, says the chat. Mm. I am out of water. American is not a language. Yes, it is. American English, it's called. American is a language. The American, as he says. He goes, why? Because it's America, that's why. <laughs> so, you say an American is a language? Oh, yeah, it is. Cool. Awesome. Right, anyway, there no, seems to be no video about today. Everyone's just having fun, which I love. Oh, you contacted Wings. That's really good. Thank you. I love the dragon, too. And I've even got, started collecting people up there. There. By the way, if you do want to send something in, I, I will be setting up a PO box or something to display on the shelf or around the room somewhere. Uh, by all means, feel free to do so. If you want uh, my address or whatever, send a PM or something, and I'll try and get something sorted out for you. Um, I, I'm actually debating whether to set up a subscription service, and that will be for you guys. And you'll subscribe to us, and you'll have access to a private forum that we're going to set up soon. And... I will paint a little miniature, a Warhammer 40,000 uh, infantry miniature with your name on the base in the colors that you want and the facial style that you want, and I'll place it on the shelf. 
or a shelf i'll make a shelf like there and you guys can you guys as fans can be in the video in model form how do you like that or even tanks i might make some tanks miniature tanks or something we'll see the t-shirt is not falling glue works glue works oh yeah it does glue man did you not did you miss the episode did you miss showtime number two was it showtime number two um i got this mother effing glue between the break it fell off and during the break i stuck it to the wall with heavy duty spray glue heavy duty spray glue and i was like mother and, just, and i sprayed it to the wall it is stuck there now absolutely stuck to the wall glue i glued it there i freaking glued it to the wall i stuck it to the wall it's there you're not gonna see that t-shirt move again it's dead it's dead what do you guys think of the vk changes oh gonna find out about that soon i'm gonna be interviewing people who have uh, managed to test the changes on the server and they might have killed my beloved vk 2801 how dare they rage inducing but yeah it's not gonna fall it's not gonna fall that thing is stuck i'm gonna try and rip it from the wall it's not gonna stay it's not it's not gonna fall don't try it don't don't you try it don't you try it uh, uh. all right guys see you later